gonna start. We're gonna start moving a little bit. I wanna get. I wanna get some paint down on these guys. So, whoops. <clears throat> I'm base coat with Hammerfall khaki. I really like the P3 range. I think there are some really good people don't talk about it that much, and I feel like it doesn't get a lot of love. But it's a really good paint range. It has some really nice colors um, that have good colors. Oh, whoops. Hang on. Hate when I do this. So apparently there are little like end caps to these. Kind of parchments that are floating down here. There are these little, they're like the little decorative elements on the end of Tarouges or something on, on armor. So we're going to want to go back and, and paint those real quick. And then we can go back with the wash real quick give that a second to dry and go back with the khaki and keep going on this so like this hammerfall khaki is a great color uh, they make a like signar blue highlight is a fantastic color for ultramarines um, they have some really good greens and blues uh their neutral colors are really good so there there are definitely some colors with p3 that that are very very good that are nice to have in the toolbox um, and some companies just do some colors better than others um, you know not a lot of companies are good at everything when it comes to paint colors p3 you know they have their they have their uses for sure. Like army painter, I don't use I don't use any army painter like paints personally. I've never found the consistency of their paint to be really great for how I like to paint. I don't know. I've, plenty of people get good results with army painter, but I've just never I've just never really enjoyed painting with their paint, but I have all their shades, you know, I have all of them and they're fantastic. Not the quick shade. I'm not dipping. I'm not dipping these things, but yeah, P3 is tough to find, especially now that, um, privateer press is struggling a little bit with War Machine. Um, rumor is that the latest rule set last year or the year before was um, not great. So people left the game. And um, that makes it hard to sustain <laughs> a business model. So we're going to go, while that's drying, let's do a cold... Let's do a cold gold on this. So we're going to do uh, black gold or necrotic gold from scale 75. I'm going to be jumping around a lot, and I'm sorry about that, but... I don't like I don't like waiting for things to dry. And we want to be real careful when we're painting this thing because going back and trying to touch up this white would be an absolute nightmare. So we're really going to try and be extremely careful when we're painting this. 
I do not want to have to come back and try and fiddle with this white. I'm going to come back and do like an edge highlight and highlight the rivets, but I'm not going to, God willing, I'm not going to have to come back and do any kind of extensive retouching because of this Aquila. So I'm doing the Aquila because I'm going to do the base coat of necrotic gold and then I'm going to wash it with that same with that same mix that I washed the brass with. So I want to get this base coat down while that brass is still wet in the palette, while that wash is still wet in the palette, so that I can use it. So it just saves me it just saves me a step of getting out the Druchi Violet and putting it on the palette, which doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot of time. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> if I had to, you know, if I if I just went a different sequence and I had to pull out the Juju Violet, it wouldn't be a big deal. It's not like it would take, you know, it takes a few seconds. But, you know, that's a few seconds I could spend doing something else. It adds up. Especially if you're doing if you're doing a lot of models, if you're doing especially like batch painting, you know those kind of things add up. So it's it's a good habit to get into to ask to always be asking yourself, you know, is there somewhere else? Like there's only there's a tiny bit of this purple left on this palette, just but I only need a tiny bit to shade this eagle, and now that's shaded and ready for the highlight. Might have been a little heavy on that that's okay it'll survive so always be asking yourself what is there somewhere that i could be using this what else am i going to use what else am i going to shade purple what else am i going to do this and that way when it when it comes up and you're like oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna need purple to shade that gold over there then you can just get the gold out and use the last the last little bit of that wash so that was the hammerfall khaki on the scripture there on this parchment then we're going to shade with that good old agrax earth shade skill in a bottle this stuff is great Love me some Agrax Earthshade. And really, I should have shaded that lens that I'm going to paint. I should have base coated that lens that I'm going to paint red because I'm going to need that purple for that too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can find P3. I mean, of course, you know, probably Amazon, but. Oh um, my. Let's see, so we're gonna do red, yeah, because the red will look, the red will work with the, uh, red kind of leather that we're gonna do on the half of the axe, so it's not gonna be, I still worry about this red unbalancing the model, and if it does, we'll just repaint it, not a big deal. So this is uh, Vallejo model color black red. And we'll do this one too. And that one right there. Ah, the light, the light. What do I want to do for the fat light? I kind of want to do a turquoise. I kind of don't like that red now. You see how that red is like interacting with that green? I'm not. I'm not loving it. I feel like it's too much. But I also haven't done any red anywhere else yet. So if I do the axe half, how I'm going to do that, and the leather back here, I think maybe that balances out. Maybe I'll do this. That's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so to balance out this red, I'm going to do this in the color that I was already going to do, which is this bloodstone. 
Speaking of P3 paints that are absolutely clutch, Bloodstone is phenomenal. Run out and buy this if you don't have it. For doing like leather, like a reddish brown leather, this stuff is amazing. So run out and buy this if you don't have it. P3 Bloodstone. Sounds like I need more. <clears throat> but um, so this is going to be the axe half is going to be this reddish brown. And then what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do this hose, this back hose here. I think I'm going to do red too. So that creates that creates a triangle visually. And at the center of that triangle is the contrast with the green eyes. And so instead of pulling, like right now, I feel like if I paint these red, it's going to pull away from the eyes because it's so contrasty and you can't really see the eyes. You're going to see these before you see the helmet. If I create that visual interest in, in that triangle with the head at the center, I think it's going to keep the focus on the head. So it trick the eye into focusing on the head. So that'll be the plan. So while we're doing that, we'll just go ahead and base coat this hose as well. And get back in there. And we do want to be careful because this armor is not easy to touch up. So yes, we've painted the armor and yes, it's a fairly straightforward scheme. It's not, you know, edge highlighted to death, but because you're doing that ink glaze technique to get that metallic black, you really it, it's tricky to it's tricky to touch up. You can't just paint it like if this were just black armor, you just paint it black and, and be done with it. See that already looks better. I'm already happier with that than I was with just the and then if we put this in front of it, now we're back to having that green be. I'm already happier with that. Excellent. Uh, looks like the Agrax is still drying. So we move on. What the heck am I going to do with that light? Man, it's turquoise. So kind of one of my go-to, one of the colors I love, and this is something that will happen just the more you paint. I'm sure it already, you know, you already have your favorites. Kind of turquoise, aqua, blue-green is one of my favorite colors to paint. I love painting like aqua. I love painting magenta. Magenta is a super fun color to work with. I do that more with kind of chaos models than imperial models. It just has more of a chaos -y feel to it. So I'm just going to paint that. Then we'll lighten that up a couple steps. And and then we'll go in and do kind of the cage around the, around the light. Now I'm going to go in with uh, Elven Gold from Scale 75. And highlight those Aquilas on the, bolt, on the bolter. Very carefully. Although this is less... This is, has less potential for disaster than the base code did, just because we're staying on top of the Aquila to highlight it. That looks pretty good. Oop. There we go. And that purple dried up, so I'm going to have to go grab a little bit more to shade that lens. That's why I didn't shade the lens right away. So we'll just highlight those and just very gently moving using the side of the tip of the brush there to, to get those wings. So that looks pretty good. Then we're going to get that wash back out, that kind of custom mix. Let's get that Agrax out of there.
thin that down just a little bit. And I am going to invest in a palette cam hopefully later this month so that you guys can see everything that's going on on the palette as well. Um, that's something that I just haven't, uh, purchased yet. So, uh, sometime this month, that's my goal for this month is to get a palette cam for, for this, because it is important to see, um, kind of the dilution and the mixing and stuff like that. So it's on a list of things to do and that'll just be another window. Uh, that'll just be another window on the, on the stream, obviously. So. I think it would be helpful. So base coated those. Now we'll go in. We're actually not going to wash that turquoise. We're just going to go in with this blue green from Blue Model Color. This color is awesome. I love this color. It's super vibrant. So we're going to go in with this and just do, and we do not really have to be super fine with this because really not a lot of this is going to show. Most of this is going to be covered by that kind of cage around, around the, the bulb, I guess. And then we're going to go in, we have that white left over from the, the spot in the eye lens. And now we're going to go through and just kind of mash a little bit of that white in there. And we are not looking for, you know, perfect, perfect blends here, but that looks all right. You guys still with me? The, uh, doing all right it just looks is there something going why is the cpu use so high am i uploading something what is going on i don't think so no meh you could uh Where's my live dashboard? Sorry. Whoa. You guys, uh, throw something out in the chat if you're still there. The stream's still going well. I'm a little paranoid now. But I'll just keep I'll just keep chatting. Uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. It on the so I'm I'm watching this through OBS because it's actual real time. There isn't like there's a little bit of lag between this and the stream. Um, but it just drives me crazy. So thank you for letting me know. Um. But when I go to my dashboard, it, it looks okay. So then we're going to go in with uh, Evil Sun Scarlet from GW, which is like pretty much my favorite red. Ooh, it's up there. I use this for everything. And now we're just going to do a little crescent moon. And then these little ones are going to be uh, tricky, to say the least. Mm. That worked well enough. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, dude, the... It's interesting, like, I love multi-part kits, but, like, some of these push fit kits are just insane. So this is a uh, Secret Weapon Miniatures Heavy Body Black. This stuff is great for lining work. So we're going to go in... And just outline this cage. And what's what we really want is that. Ah! <laughs> this is so true. It's such a small space between. It's such a small space between the side of the cage around this ball anybody who's painted one of these or like the you know headlights on a rhino or something the the area between the the bottom of the side of the these little cage legs and the actual bulb area itself is so small that's why i'm trying to use this glaze to do it so I don't have to paint down in there. I can just, it'll flow. But holy smokes, there is not a lot of real estate. To work with. I think that's about, that's about as good as it's going to get. Which is actually, I'm pretty happy with. Because that's, you can still see a decent amount. Are you paying? Dude, that Ambot model is so sick. I wanted a I wanted a box of those for quite some time. Ever since I saw them. So I'm drinking tea with a ton of honey in it to try and keep uh, something resembling a voice this evening. Um, so for the islands, now we're gonna go back to game color orange fire. And this is, if you haven't noticed, I kind of have a thing about collecting paints. Um, I have a ton, hundreds. <laughs> I just, I just don't, I don't really like, I think it stems from the fact that I don't really like mixing colors that much. It makes it harder to repeat things that I've done later. Um, So if I see if I see something and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting color, I'll pick it up and then. It happens less now that I moved to Idaho. And uh, there just isn't the selection that I used to have. So now we're gonna go in with uh, Vallejo model color flat yellow. And this is a pretty light yellow, but. As far as yellow goals goes, as far as yellows go, it has a pretty good, it has pretty good coverage. And I don't need much. I just need a little hint in the bottom corner of these two tiny ones here. And then just a little, there we go. So you see how much that, even just that tiny bit of yellow just influence that lens. Super happy with that. And then now the fun part. Ha! Got it. That was awesome. Um, so to do that, I'm resting the whole, I'm bracing this whole model. I'm like holding the model by the base. I'm resting that on the table and I'm curling my finger around. So this model like isn't going anywhere. And then I rest my back finger on my finger on the model that's on the table. And then I just use these three fingers to 
to just put that dot on. Everything else on both hands and the model is stable. It's the only way to get something like that. I mean, should I use a model holder? Probably. Will I? Probably not. There we go. That's a nice looking gem. I'm super happy with that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it when a plan comes together. Most stores around here paints are old enough to completely separate. Oh, that's that's a bummer. Yeah, here they just don't carry many paint lines. Like they have Vallejo. They when I when I moved here a year and a half ago, they only had I could only find like GW and Vallejo model color, which is fine. I can live on Vallejo model color. So this is Vallejo metal color, pale burnt metal, and this is we're just gonna do the cage for this real quick. So, um, I was spoiled in California, in, in Silicon Valley, where I moved from. We had a number of game stores, and the manager of, of one kind of chain of game stores was a pretty good painter, and he was also like a paint enthusiast. And so he stocked like AK's whole range of paints and, and diorama products and um, and all that. So they have that cage. So you can see that cage on the light. We're going to leave that where it is. I'm not going to touch that again. That thing is just like an opportunity for a mistake. So we're not, we're not going to do anything more to that. But I am going to come in here and I'm going to do the pale burnt metal. And just outline boom. So, uh, so yeah, I used to go in and they had like all of AK's paint ranges, all of Vallejo's paint ranges, Game Air, Model Air, Vallejo Model Color, um, Metal Color, everything. Just everything. And um, every time I went there, I picked up, you know, two or three pots of paint. So, damn, that looks good. I'm super happy with that. All right, moving on. So, it, um, so I was really spoiled. And then when I moved here, the store only had... Um, the store only had like Vallejo model color and then they started stocking we started talking to the guy and he started stocking uh, he got Vallejo metal color he got uh, model air which was a big deal uh, we're still working on him to get game air and I'll leave white out um Game Air and some of the AK, some of the diorama products, because those are really good too. But that's more of a long shot. If he just had Vallejo Model Air, Game Air, Model Color, and Metal Color, I'd be super happy. So, uh, Elvin, let's try to put some paints back real quick so that it doesn't get super crazy on the desk. I work, I work pretty organized most of the time. Once it starts to go sideways, I get a little, I get a little worked up. So now we're going back. So we did the, uh, yeah. So the the store that that carries the more expanded range locally caters to scale model, scale model. People and uh, Gundam is there, and like RC cars and stuff like that. Um, they don't actually sell miniatures. They just sell. So they have like every enamel paint I'd ever want, which I don't, you know, and model railway stuff. So model rail, scale models, Gundam. They have the best selection. 
the game stores really only carry like Army Painter and GW. Uh, so now we're going to go in with Deck Tan from Model Color, which is a really nice... I love this color. Like, instead of doing, like, an ivory or a bone or something, Deck Tan is just a little more desaturated. It's not as yellow as, like, a bone. And this is going... We're going to be real thin. That's too thick. I want to be really thin with this. I want to kind of build up what I want to give the impression of. So while I like the idea of painting script on these parchments, one, I'm terrible at it, and two, and this is like, you know, you have to suspend disbelief when painting at this scale, right? But if you were to paint actual like script on these parchments, the, the lettering in real life would be like this big, which would be ridiculous. So, you can't, because, like, if this dude's, like, eight plus feet tall, and those things are, what, two and a half feet long, three feet long, and a letter is, you know, five or six inches, I mean, you're going to have lettering like this, when really, the lettering's probably tiny even to him, so you're never going to see it. So, in the interest of time and skill level, um, what I do is I go in with a deck tan, very, very thin. And then kind of hitting these high high points, I just start doing like horizontal, little horizontal jabs. And I'll avoid like the deep shadow, like where that, that agrax is settled. I'll largely avoid that. And what this is going to do is it's going to give like the illusion of worn parchment, but it's also going to give... There could be writing there. If you want to, if you want to see a really good tutorial on how to paint ridiculously small writing on purity seals and stuff, Darren Latham, who was one of, he was the lead painter for Heavy Metal for GW for a long time, and now he's one of their miniature designers. Um, he's the head judge for, he's one of the judges for Golden Demon. Um, the dude is obviously just a ridiculous painter. Um, he has started a YouTube channel recently of tutorials. And they're amazing. They are so good. So you can see how we're kind of getting that stride. Yeah, that turned out well, actually. You can see how we're getting that kind of striated, kind of old parchment look. That's exactly what I'm going for on that parchment. And that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to really mess with that too much because I think it looks good. And if I did like some kind of embellishment or something, I'd have to continue it on both sides. And it's just more opportunity for, I just, I need to get better at it. It's something I want to get better at. I don't necessarily want to experiment on this model. So um, I really like this look. I think it's really, I think it really is effective to get that kind of worn parchment look. But, um, but anyway, if you go, if you go to Darren Latham's uh, YouTube, he has a ton of tutorials and they are so good, but it's like how to paint text on a purity seal or how to paint, a uh, space marine face and it's like an hour long tutorial on you know painting the face on a space marine or painting uh the wax on a purity seal and you know with nine different blends or something and it looks just unreal um but for me that kind of thing i, I watch them I, i'll take some tips i'll take some you know i'll take what i can but i if I ever want to get an army on the table, I can't spend 45 minutes on one purity seals text, you know? Um, but it is, that being said, there's plenty to learn. Even if you're not doing that, he has, he, he has a really lovely uh, cadence and voice. So there's that, but 
you know, it's one of those things. It's on my list of things to improve as well as just, you know, freehand in general. Um, and the thing about doing these striations is we can go back kind of sticking towards the edges and get those highlights a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to go in with the uh, Vallejo model color ivory and just mix it up just a little bit, a little tiny bit with the deck tan to get, to get a highlight color for that. So that's the deck tan and that's the highlight color. Like they're not, they're not far off at all. But you'll see it. You'll see it show up when we when we do some highlights, and then just sticking near these high points, we're just gonna do a couple little jabs, and we don't want that to be smooth. We want that to have some texture. We want that to have a little a little interest to it. So you can see there those creases are a little bit more defined, and that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm really happy with that for a, for like a faded parchment. So um, one of these days I'll get better at freehand. Um, you know, it's not that I don't think I can do it. I, I'm sure I probably could. Uh, but watching Darren is just like an exercise in brush control. That guy's brush control is unbelievable. Um but it's just not as, you know, like any other part of painting or any other part of life, really. You develop skills over time and repetition. And it's just not a skill that I've practiced that much freehand. So. Hello, Gold Squadron. Um, one day. One day, I will. So parchment's good, lens is good, light bulb, good, spotlight, whatever that thing is. I find it, I'm just going to go on a little bit of, a little side tangent, just a brief one. Um, this like light with the metal housing, really? Like why, why? Don't they have all those augmentics in their, you know, in their eyes? Like why does the dude need a spotlight? For real. Like, they can't they see in the dark? Anyway. Um, but if you look for realism in 40K, you're going to have a really, really bad time. So, now that that's done, lens looks good. Parchments look good. Brass looks good. Light bulb looks good. Now we're going to go back over 